What's going on guys, Kangaroo Fitness here, and if you're new to the channel, this is what you've been missing out on. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you leave this video with a like. Yeah, I've been appreciating all the feedback from you guys. I've been getting random messages from people saying that my uh, videos are helping them, that they're adding um, additional exercises to their workouts because they've watched my video. So yeah, I really appreciate that guys, keep it coming. But today I wanted to talk about rep ranges and my opinion as well as some which are backed by scientific research. Just recently I've been adapting my training program so that I'll start off with the compound exercises. but. I've changed the rep ranges. So I'll start training at uh, five to eight rep ranges for the compound exercises. And then with the isolation movements, I'll stick between the hypertrophy rep range. So sort of between eight and 12 reps, eight and 15 reps. But with the compound exercises, I'll probably do five sets. Um, so I'll up the set frequency. Um, but I'll lower the repetitions just so I'm lifting closer to my one rep max. Um, if you've seen the secret to the muscle hypertrophy video, then I'll say that mechanical tension is a big factor in muscle growth and muscle hypertrophy. So if you're lowering that rep range and lifting more of your one rep max, you're gonna be increasing the mechanical tension workload. So eventually you will stimulate more muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth. But a big factor with muscle growth has been included in the compound exercises. So you've got to have compound exercises in your program. Really, you should focus your program all around the compound exercises. So whether it's your bench press, your deadlifts, your squats, um, your shoulder presses, just anything like that, which is a big heavy movement. You need to begin your workout with that. You need to be lifting closer towards your one rep max whilst you're doing these compound workloads. A lot of previous research has shown that going until failure on the compound exercises does not benefit your workout. There's been a couple of interesting videos showing that um, you've got the choice between training until failure or training um, at a slightly less workload. So for an, for an example, uh, you could potentially train until failure on a compound lift. You could get 10 repetitions, but then you're completely burnt out. But if you do eight repetitions, and then you've still got two left in the tank, so if you save that for the next set, then potentially you can get more repetitions out your next set instead of completely going to failure in the first set and then not being able to do as many repetitions in the next set, if you know what I mean. So you just need to be very cautious about when you train until failure, especially on the compound load. With the isolation movements, I'll always train until failure, especially on the last two exercises, just to increase that metabolic stress, which again, is another factor in muscle growth. So yeah, I'm gonna show you some highlights from a push session. I'm gonna be teaming up with uh, Kynan AB Fitness. Um, who's also another personal trainer. Um, we're gonna be hitting predominantly chest, but we're also gonna be hitting some uh, shoulders and then finish off with some supersets on tricep. Let's go! Escape from the room, now I'm out the basement, headed straight for the moon And it might be some 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to Velocity PC. I've just passed my personal training exam and got my qualification and uh, they helped me through the process. And once again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave this video with a like. And peace.